Okay, I thought I'd do an update on where we are with the electricals in the van. There's three main sockets for 240 I have at that side. The cable comes round here. We're going to have some more sockets on here. But we had an accident with those and the trim, uh, which we won't go into. Um, but they'll be wired into the inverter, which is now tucked away inside here because uh, there's nothing else to go in there the hot air from the under floor heater comes in at that corner and it's blown upwards into that compartment which won't affect the inverter um, because it's never going to get to a temperature it's going to be bothered by and then when the, the cover is on there it says trying to find the cover when the cover is on there the hot air will exit out of the vent holes in the cover so there's hot air will come in at that side of the van but um, this is electrics not hot air so this video is going to go over the construction of the mounts for the batteries um, and the testing of the batteries um, and, well, let's get on with that bit now Okay, the time is 19.12, this has been going about two minutes, so we'll leave it going and see where we get. Okay, so battery one lasted about 30 minutes until 7.40ish, 7.41, and this one was started at 7.42. Anyway, now we're out with this one. I think that's it dead there. Yep. Nothing more out of that, so 30 minutes on that one. About 57 on this one. Uh, so now we'll go to this other one. See what we get over here. Okay, restart on that battery at 8.43 because that one is dead. Well, here's the start of one of my under four battery mounts. And, um, I'm just using some old angle, I think. I'm not sure what size this is, three quarter inch, 20 mil, some of like that. And, um, I'm just trying to work out the best way to go about this. Um, I'm presuming holding the battery down each side to give it support. Um, I don't think you need to go across the middle with anything. It's a quite an heavy battery. Um, I think this is the way I'm going to go with the corner arrangement. Is I'm just going to drill through and um, drop a piece of threaded bar through the, the side. Put a nut on the bottom. I don't know if I'll need a nut on the top. I'd very much doubt it. And then. Um, four holes in the four and bolt this through the four. I'll put another piece of metal kind of down the front of the battery. Um, should be able to get the holes in this to match up with that and that hold the battery down so the battery is not going to be bouncing up in the air. Put a nut over the top of here. Um, at the bottom there's this piece here made for fastening it down here and I've got some big washers I should be able to put them the bolt through there and it can pivot on there and pull down against the battery so that should hold the battery down there as well it should be fairly secure the only issue I can see is with the battery swaying side to side if it's on 
four poles going what you want bolted through the floor is that if there's a gap between the top of the battery and the floor it's going to be able to move um, I don't know maybe I can put this over here and bolt that through and then just tighten this up against the bottom of the van um, have a cover for the terminals obviously and that might keep it all tight in place I don't need to be shaking and bouncing about but I think that's going to be the only way I'll get away with doing it. Um, I'm going to need some big washers inside the van floor and I couldn't find anything suitable but I found these strips. So I thought if I draw a hole in the centre and that will go in the floor at that angle and spread the weight out and one at each corner. And that should um, strengthen the floor. Not take up too much height. I can make a if I had to use something like that on the inside of the van, the carpet's got about an inch of foam under the carpet, so it'll go over it, compress the foam, and it'll be fine. I don't think it'll show too much, but um, they're not going to show at all. Not going to show at all, those. And um, this metal was free. Um, I went to the where they dump all the metal, and there was an old mangled road sign. And that's what this was. An old mangled rope sign. So they had five or six of them there when I went last year, so I shoved them on my shoulder and shook hands and come home on my push bike with them. So now we're gonna get recycled. It's the best form of recycling you can have is to repurpose, because if this went off to be recycled, we'd have to melt it down and You've got all the wasted energy melting it down to make more of this angle iron so that I can then buy it and cut it and I can just cut this. So, repurpose. Repurpose what you've got and what you can use. It's cheaper and it's environmentally better than recycling. Recycling is a bit of a con if you do some research into it. The amount of money the recycling industry makes shows it is just business. Well, there's a threaded bar through the floor of the van. And um, I had trouble getting a spanner to the nuts on these. So I saw far up against the runner. So I've extended this one and put this arrangement in, which there's nowhere that's going nowhere. This one is bolted in kind of as it is um, so I'll chop them down once I know that's the the correct length I might need to give a bit more I might need to tighten them up I'm not sure so until I do know I'm not going to chop them off and commit myself and the van's not in use at the moment so it's it is in use but the back of the van is not in use just the driving bit so Things in here can bounce about and set on, make their own final adjustments, and then I'll trim them. Well, under here with the torch, you can see where my my battery carrier now kind of carries the battery. Under here in the smuggling compartments, there's a threaded bar, and there's nut, and there's a captive nut on the inside as well so that's going to need a bit of a trim uh, a bit of paint throwing at it there's a negative terminal which can't touch anything but who cares if it did up there we can just see this plastic noodle I think can we it's up there somewhere there it is the white bit, that should be a grey bit. So that gives it some sponginess to stop the battery hitting the bottom of the van. Um, what else have we got? I think that's it. Just a positive side. Here's the positive side of the battery, which is mounted just the same way. I didn't kind of think when I did this. Um, I don't know if this is going to focus. I didn't think how near 
my little frame for the battery was going to be against the uh, chassis at the side of the the van there's no gap at all um, I don't like no gap at all it means it's in contact it could cause the um, under seal to wear off and then start to corrode because of the difference in voltage between the different metals when they're wet um, so I'm not too happy about that now up there there's more of us foam noodle and there's positive wire off as battery which goes down there it's uh, got a good thick coating on it and um, the battery will be taken off sideways somewhere and I've got no idea where the positive's going yet because I don't know where the inverter's going to go but wherever it goes uh, it's there I want it as near to the inverter as I can get it and as near to the other batteries that I'll put in this pack as I can get it because I'm going to be having more than one that's for certain so that's it for tonight the first battery is mounted um, it's a prototype mounting method I'll see how it goes um, it might be a worker in which case I'll do the other one the same um, and then again it might not and um, it's got to come out anyway because this battery is not it's got good capacity but it's not as good as it could be and it's not a leisure battery so it'll be coming out so that I can put a proper leisure battery in well this is the finished fitment through the top of the floor all the nuts I used when I were constructing everything have been changed to nylon nuts um, wherever possible I've put double nuts on a standard one tightened down and then a nylon over the top and then tighten them two together to lock them off um, that's the only visible sign of the battery which the big thick spongy carpet will cover up and the other nuts from that side you can just see where they are because they cause a little dimple on the top of the plastic but they just sit underneath as you can see so it's all tucked out, uh, out of the way I didn't actually think they'd be touching the plastic that much to cause a mark in it but um, I'm not too worried I could always just jump in there with grinder, take a bit more metal off the top or put something on this just to raise it up a tiny few mil it's just borderline, it's you know, not too bad, come over with that not so bad at all so once the carpet's in, invisible batteries um, that one as you can see doesn't really show it all apart from that spike the thing which I can chop off um, this one does hang down a couple of inches but I've already been out and attacked every speed bump in the area that I can find and it's not caught on none of them um, there's no damage to the nut or anything so it's not been catching so I think that'll do as is I think I'm happy with that and this one's got to come off anyway because this is where the duff battery is fitted but once the new one arrives, I'll swap it out and I'll give it all a coat of paint. And I might put some high vis tape on this just to make it obvious that it's there. Well, here's a, a final view of the carpet. And if anyone was wondering how much the nuts are going to show through all that foam, that's how much foam there is on this carpet. It's quite thick when you compare that to the size of the nut there's a big difference and it's easily going to be squished into that foam not going to be felt through the cloth so I think I'm going to get away with this being an invisible modification but um, this carpet's not staying as it is I've already taken the carpet completely out put it on the drive got the big brush and the hose pipe and it's been scrubbed and washed and scrubbed and washed and I still can't completely get these stains out of it that are in it so um, I've got some rolls of car carpet just the, the top thin layer which I'll put over the top of this 
and it's in a, a dark charcoal grey, almost black, which I think will be a better option uh, for a carpet. Uh, I don't know what to do with the rest of the interior because the rest of the interior is not the best in the world either, it's all well scuffed. Um, and even if you can clean these marks off, you can't get shut of the white marks because the top surface of the plastic's gone. I've got no idea what I could do with those. If anybody does know how to recondition this kind of plastic, um, even now get uh, the new battery ordered to replace the duff and um, finish up putting the rest of the interior back in in the back so thanks for watching I don't know which bit I'll be doing next but I've got uh, a semi interesting video coming on emergency puncture repair with the cheap eBay puncture repair kits and also the a super duper high quality Chinese inverter that I bought. Well, it still works as an inverter, the charging side's already gone with a pop and a bit of smoke. So I'll be having to do a repair on that, so that'll be another video as well. So thanks for watching these, and we'll see you again.